So here's your uh, color scale here. Now this uh, color spectrum is going to be useful in the experiment that we're going to do now. So that is simply establishing a set standard. What does it mean to establish a standard and why are we going to use this uh, in our experiment? Yeah. You know what, um, something, like if we experiment with something and change it into something else, we know what goes before. Perfect, right? So we're, we've established a set of known standards. So when we, when we test something's pH, if it turns out to be this first turquoise color, you could infer, based on comparison to this standard, what? That the unknown solution that you're testing is pH what? Eight. Yeah. If I take this uh, five out and it's light purple, and your unknown solution comes out to be light purple, even though you don't know what this, the pH is, you can infer, based on this information over here, that it's pH what? Five. You see how that works? So we're establishing a standard for comparison of unknowns. Yeah? Now this is a color a metric test. So we're using colors to indicate numbers. Right? So it is a qualitative test and not a quantitative. So qualitative because you're going to judge with your eye whatever result you get if it's in between this and this, right? You're going to have to make that decision as to what the pH of that is. If it's closer to this, it's 3. If it's closer to this, it's 2. Right? If it's somewhere in between, maybe it's 2.4. Um, so far, so good? Yeah. So it's qualitative, not quantitative. If I, if I wanted a quantitative test, I'd go into the back and grab these pH probes that we have where you just stick the probe into the solution, you press a button and a number pops up. Why are we not doing that? Why would you guess that I'm asking you to determine the color and compare it to the standard? So we can figure it out ourselves. Yeah. Yeah, yeah you're figuring, you're, you're thinking more in this process than you are when you press the button and write down 2.6. Okay? We're using that, uh, that ability to infer in this experiment. Okay? Any questions on what we're going to we're, what we're using this for? Here's what we're going to do. You're going to get, with your uh, table mates, three uh, test tubes of the same size as these. So you get your test tubes. You get a uh, test tube rack, which there are floating uh, a bunch of them around. You can use this. You can use this, OK? You find a rack, and you're going to go around the room and find a solution whose pH you do not know. It could be organic white grapefruit juice, or no, organic white grape juice. Anybody know the pH of this? Ooh. That's a guess, right? Anybody know the pH of seltzer water? So you think it's basic? Okay. So we're going to test to see what the pH of these are based on comparing the color your unknown solution turns when mixed with what? Cabbage juice. Cabbage indicator. Okay. So here's how we're going to do this. Starting down at this table here, I'm going to pause this because we don't need to. Our city. Yeah. Uh, what are those bubbles? Most beverages are carbonated. Yeah. Carbonic acid. And, yeah. Yeah, so the things that go into preserving freshness and taste, the preservatives, the, uh, the carbon, the bubbles, it's all acidic. Yeah, so I'm not surprised that all these things were, in fact, uh, on the color scale down here, sort of on the, the pinkish side um, of that. Anybody test um, milk of magnesia or mylanta? 
this stuff right here. It says, tough on heartburn, gentle on your body. <laughs> Anybody test that? No. So if you would have tested it, what color do you think it would have come out on our scale? Think about the ad I just read. It'd probably come out green. In fact, it does come out green. Uh, it comes out, I think, I think it's sort of on the, uh, the nine sort of range. So I think we're dealing with something like this. Why does it make sense that a medical product targeted for curing or uh, soothing heartburn would, would land on the basic side of the scale? Yeah, what do you, what do you say? They don't have those any acid stuff to... So they're not necessarily adding acids to the mix? Yeah. Yeah? What else would you say? Yeah. So uh, acid, heartburn is caused by acid coming up into your esophagus. Uh, so you wouldn't treat uh, acid reflux or heartburn with something that's acidic. Instead, you add something that's what? Basic. Basic to combat that, right? Uh, so good. I, I hope you're appreciating the, the thought that goes into I mean. This is not, you know, we're not publishing this data for sure, right? It's not, we're not tearing the world down with this data, but it's important to be able to think this way and to use inferences and to um, practice our reasoning skills, right? Because most of the problems on your test, it's analysis and reasoning. If I give you this information, can you think your way to an answer that makes sense? So that's gonna be up and down this test, and so you'll have to do that a little bit. Um, some of you tested uh, the Diet Coke. Now, right off the bat, you're probably thinking, what about the uh, pH level of a Diet Coke? And what pH is like that? Yeah, what would like you think it was? Three. Two or a three. Very acidic, right? When you tested it, though, what color came out? Orange. Brown. Yeah. Brownish orange, right? So. Early on in this class, I asked you to tell me, like, for each experiment, what was the pitfall of that experiment? What would you fix next time? So clearly for this experiment, what is the downfall of some of our products that we're sampling based on the way that the test works? What do you think, Nick? Uh, I think that some of them may be off the chart. So right off the bat, they could be off the chart acidic or basic, right? Or fall into a category that we didn't test, and so we don't have the color to, um, to compare to. That's a problem with the, with the experiment. We should have done absolutely every uh, pH range, but we did it. Fine. But what's the problem with Coke and with um, tea and with uh, mouthwash? Did anybody test the mouthwash? In fact, where is the mouthwash? Oh, here it is. I'm like, did somebody really need mouthwash that bad that they took the mouthwash? This mouthwash has been sitting on that shelf for years. Um, so don't try this at home. Uh, what's the problem with testing this mouthwash in our experimental design? If I dump this into a, into a, a test tube and I don't even add any uh, cabbage uh, extract, what are you automatically thinking about the pH of mouthwash? It's basic. Yeah, you would infer that it's basic. Um, so things that have a color to them, Coke, mouthwash, it's already sort of skewing the data, right? Because it looks as if it's one result because it's, it's automatically it's starting off colored. That's a problem with our design, okay? So that's a problem with this experiment. That's, that's fine. This is a, a thinking activity, so it's not, it's not like you needed to know no. um, Okay, so here's what I want you to do. I want you to...